My name is Dr. Cheryl Burdett, and I am the educational director and co-founder of Precision Point Diagnostics. And our flagship test is our food allergy and sensitivity test. And what's unique about it is that rather than just looking at allergies or just looking at sensitivities, it looks at both of those together and then other factors in the immune system that modify that outcome. For example, with IgG, we look at C3D, a complement antigen that will amplify that IgG reaction a thousand to 10,000 fold. With IgE, we look at IgG subtype four, which will actually create tolerance to your allergies. So it's a very complete test that really gives you a more full understanding of where your patient is truly reacting to food where the immune system is compensated or where the immune system is even hyper augmented uh, in terms of reaction based on looking at multiple immunologic factors. And so what I see in clinical practice is when you don't look at all of these factors together, people eliminate based on one type of reaction and they may add back in foods that are reacting in another way because they don't have a complete picture. They don't get better. They may even feel worse. And so this is why we have to look at all of the ways the immune system is reacting to foods in order to have the best outcomes. However, when you get back multiple immune reactions to foods, it can also be confusing. Uh, in one way you're reacting, in another way you're not reacting. Maybe you have an antibody that dictates tolerance. So what do we do with this information once we have it in front of us? So a quick gestalt in terms of how to synthesize these results is to first start and look at where are the most reactions? Are there IgE or IgG? And a, a nice simple thing to do then is after you've looked at where the reactions are to go to the elimination diets. The less restrictive diet takes out all your high reactions. The more restrictive diet takes out the highs and the moderate reactions. So look back and forth between these two. Look to see which one has a reasonable amount of foods to take out that makes sense for the patient. How much dietary change have they done before? How inflamed are they? These are things that will dictate which list that you will use. However, for most patients, taking out somewhere between 10 to 15 foods is usually the amount that's manageable for their diet. And this will help to eliminate the things that are most inflammatory so that we begin to calm down that, that inflammatory load and begin to see improvements in terms of uh, various signs and symptoms. So go back and forth, see which one you think meets the patient. And then as a, a last lens, move to the immune index. So the immune index is a, a calculation based on the amount of all of the antibodies, a summation of where foods are, are inflamed across the board, where the food is triggering multiple types of immune reactions. Look at this list. Think about from their history, foods they eat a lot of or more frequently. If there are things they eat a lot of that are also on this list, you may also want to remove those as well. And so as you're beginning to interpret these results, look at the elimination diets, the less restrictive, the more restrictive, figure out which one has a manageable amount of foods, then move to the immune index, see if there's anything that was highly inflammatory to them that wasn't included on the list that you chose, look to see if there are other foods that they eat a lot of, pull those out as well, and this will help you to get started. Then, after they come back, evaluate their improvement. If you're not seeing the improvement you would expect, then move on to things like biogenic compounds, then move on to food families, then move on to adding more foods in, creating a more uh, restrictive diet to see if that allows for improvement. But as you're first getting started, eyeball the diets, figure out which one has a manageable amount of foods for your patient, scan the immune index, think about things that they eat frequently, and this will help to build a first initial approach that really moves most patients forward in a significant way.